In this video, I'm going to introduce all of you to my partner, Greg, who's in charge of investors relations, and he is part of the syndication that myself, him, and Jarrett have actually started for assisted living facilities. And he's actually going to explain to us the benefits of being part of a syndication, how it all works, and why it's beneficial for operators. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, thank you so much for all the love and support that each and every single one of you have shown this channel. I greatly appreciate it. If you have not yet, feel free to go check out the God of My Podcast on all streaming platforms. Also, feel free to check out Legion Assisted Living Academy and Legion Assisted Living Advisors in the links down below. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and actually jump into the topic of this video. To give some people some context about what this video is all about, you coming on here, obviously everybody knows we're partnered up and everything, but I kind of want to give people more of a context of what it all takes to passively invest, how long you've been passively investing. So I guess we'll start out with you personally. How long have you been passively investing? How long have you been investing in real estate? What does that kind of look like? Yeah, sure. So I'll kind of go with my whole story here. Um, basically started in 2010. Um, I live here in Phoenix, Arizona, where I bought my first primary residence. Um, and obviously, if you are familiar with the market, 2010 was a great time to buy real estate because it was pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Um, so that was just the house that I was living in. Um, ended up buying another house two years later because I wanted, um, I had a dog at the time and I wanted my dog to have a bigger backyard. Um, so I basically just turned that 2010 house into a rental property. So, um, you know, that uh, made me a landlord, made me a real estate investor. Um, but that was more on the active side because I was managing it myself. Um, you know, fast forward three, four years. In 2015, I became a full-time residential realtor here in Phoenix. And, um, and ever since then, I've been investing in real estate in single family homes. Um, I do some notes. And then, like you said, I do invest passively in other people's syndications. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been doing that for the last probably couple of years now. And uh, me and my wife, we've uh, invested in, I think, five uh, syndications passively. And um, we can kind of talk about them, you know, a little bit more in detail if you want to, whatever, whichever road you want to go down. Yeah. First, tell us how you even come to find out about syndications, right? Because it's not like it's every day people talk about passively investing in things like this. So how did you come across syndications? Um, I came across it through, you know, a lot of the, the major websites, bigger pockets, listening to podcasts. Um, but honestly, I was just really tired of being on the active side because, you know, obviously as a realtor, that keeps me very active and then managing my own portfolio at that time. Um, since then, I've dished that off to a property manager. But um, I was just active, active, active. And, you know, when you're working 12 hour days and even on the weekends as a realtor, um, it can kind of burn you out. So I thought, you know, how can I passively invest in real estate so I can still have money coming in, but pretty much do less work overall. Um, you know, a little bit more work in the beginning, but once you kind of are comfortable with the sponsor and you understand the demographics and the, um, where the investment is, that kind of thing, you know, that money comes in every month or every quarter pretty regularly and you don't have to do too much after that initial push of energy. So um, that was my, my thought process of just, you know, how can I become a little bit more passive while doing some active stuff as well? Yeah. So how many current properties do you have under property management? And then like, what, what does that look like? So you're not no longer active. I mean, for the most part in those properties. Right. So we have uh, four total single family homes, two here in Phoenix and two here in Florida or two there in Florida. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, syndications are kind of spread all over the place. Um, one's actually international in Belize. One okay. is in uh, South Carolina, Florida, Tucson, and I'm missing one other one, um, Kansas. Okay. So, and what type of syndications are those? Are those like multifamilies? Are they storage units? Are they apartment complexes? What form of syndications are they? So they're all diverse. Um, so the one in Belize is actually a resort property. Okay. that unfortunately during COVID, the um, construction got pushed off. So we're still waiting for that to be built. Um, but that was the first one that we invested in. Um, there's another one, the South Carolina is a straight multifamily. I think it's 113 units. Okay. Uh, Tucson's the same way, it's a 93 units. And um, in the one in Florida is actually a uh, mobile home park. So I think, I believe it's 99 pads that a, uh, a friend of mine, another investor kind of turned me on to it and the timing was right. So, um, so yeah, pretty diversified in my syndications, uh, I'd, I'd say. And now look at you, we're doing residential assisted living. So yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, talk, 
talk a little bit about that. How did you, because we have Jarrett, which everyone, obviously we had a video earlier um, with him. So everyone hopefully is familiar with Jarrett. And so how did you two kind of get connected? How did you two come across each other and kind of tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so he actually reached out to me, or I reached out to him, I kind of forget, on Bigger Pockets, And um, we were just both in the RAL forums talking about residential assisted living. Um, so we actually hopped on the phone um, pretty much every week for about a year, just wow. kind of building relationships, talking about podcasts, not even talking about investing or partnering up, just really getting to know each other. And um, yeah, it just turns out we had a, both had a passion for residential assisted living and you know, we're both real estate investors, obviously. So um, the conversation just kind of continued and continued and just went down that road. And here we are. Yeah, that is awesome, man. It's funny how just things kind of one thing leads to another and you just end up building this awesome relationship and you end up really working together. And that's kind of what happened here with you and I and with Jarrett and slowly but surely, you know, we, how does it feel to be kind of starting your own syndication, you know, with obviously Jarrett and I? Because yeah. you've obviously passively invested in another one, right? As limited partners, right? Were you limited partners on those deals? Yeah, I was limited partners on those other deals that I mentioned. So, um, I, so I'm familiar with that part of the process, but being on the active side is very different. Um, mm. A lot more heavy lifting, obviously, because you're putting together the deal and making sure that all the check boxes are checked and everything is moving forward. Um, so yeah, it's fun. It's a little bit stressful. I'm not going to lie because there are yeah. a lot of... Uh, yeah. timelines and you know talking to investors and um so yeah there's there's a lot to do but um it's definitely fun and uh, and exciting at the same time yeah so tell us a little bit about your role in our syndication your role is more of investors relations and capital raising exactly yeah so i'm on the investor relations side capital raising side so um for me it's um it comes pretty common or pretty natural to me because as a realtor i do a lot of networking anyway so Mm -hmm. A lot of it is, you know, getting your name out there, talking to people and just letting them know, um, hey, this is what I'm doing. If you have any interest, let's, you know, have a conversation. I can educate you about, um, you know, our deal structure and kind of what we're doing. And if it's a good fit for you, cool. If not, that's cool too. Um, you know, I'm, even as a realtor, as an investor, um, I'm never the person to strong arm anybody into doing anything. So, um, you know, that's just kind of my laid back style, but it, it works for me and it works for, um, you know, the investor side and the realtor side as well. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's pretty, I mean, for most people, they're kind of like, all right, well, that's awesome. It's cool. But what is a syndication, right? Because I think a lot of people that are new and are looking to passively invest in something, would you give us a brief, you know, breakdown of what a syndication is in layman, layman's terms? Yeah, of course. Um, so a syndication is basically when you buy a larger building that you normally couldn't afford on your own. So instead of you know, trying to scrimp and save for five years to buy a $10 million property, um, you bring on other investors um, to basically you know, carry that load and help with the down payment, with renovations, with, with, with whatever that project kind of looks like. So um, you know, you're leveraging other people's uh, time, experience, and money to basically take down a larger deal that you normally couldn't take down. Um, that's the 10,000 foot overview of a syndication and we can kind of go into a little bit more detail, but. Yeah, so for most people, that's usually how a lot of these apartment complexes get built. This is how a lot of people are able to get into these types of deals, but it's all a matter of who you know and how to access those deals. That's what's important, right? Because tell us a little bit about, you know, can it just anybody invest? Not just anybody, right? Depending on how that deal is set up and how it's structured. So right. kind of give us a breakdown of that. Exactly. Yeah. So there are a lot of you know, rules and regulations that we do adhere to. Um, so there's you know, different kinds of syndications. And I'm going to start by saying I'm not a syndication attorney or lawyer. So this is just me giving information from the best of my knowledge. Um, but yeah, in, in deals, you know, there's people that are accredited. Um, there's people that are sophisticated investors. And you know, accredited has a definition um, of basically if you're single and you make $200,000 or more per year and you expect to make that in the next uh, two years, or if you're married and make $300,000 and expect that income as well, or if your total net worth excluding your primary residence is $1 million or more, then that um, allows you to be an accredited investor. Um, if you're not one of those two, um, you can be a sophisticated investor. And that basically is, um, you know, having a conversation with that investor, making sure they understand 
you know, basic finances, um, even some detailed finances as well, as far as how the deal works. Um, you know, if they're putting their last, let's say $10,000 into the deal or $50,000, then that's something that we would probably hit the brakes on and say, wait a minute, this is, an, uh, this is money that, you know, once you put into the deal, it's not very liquid to get out. So you do have to be, you know, aware of the timelines and usually in syndications, there are longer hold periods. So it's not like six months later, you can just kind of call your money back out and say, oh, I need my money back. Um, yep. You can do that, but there are some ramifications. So um, just having those conversations with the investors to really understand their general knowledge is the jumping off point for us to either continue those conversations, maybe give them a little bit more education or, um, you know, kind of go down um, another road, just kind of talking about the investments and that kind of thing. Yeah. Last and final question for you. Why residential assisted living, right? Because that's the channel. The channel is all about residential assisted living, investing, so on and so forth, business, but specifically residential assisted living. What kind of drew you to it? What made you really want to jump in and start the syndication with Jared and I? And yeah, what do you see for the for foreseeable future as far as syndication in residential assisted living? Yeah, so I really like uh, residential assisted living for a few a few different reasons. Um, obviously, um, you know, for the, the heartfelt reason, um, you know, we're all getting older every day. And, um, you know, I know I have an older parent and aunts and uncles and everything. So um, if and when the time comes for them to move into a facility, I really want to know exactly what's going to go on in that facility and have a little bit more information of, you know, how they're taking care of, uh, you know, my relatives and that kind of thing. So from that perspective, it really does, um, you know, kind of give you that warm feeling of, you are helping um, the elderly residents and you're also creating jobs as well for the operator who is running that business. Um, from a financial side and real estate side, you know, you take a single family home and you can, maybe you can rent it out to a, um, a, a single fa a family with kids, maybe for say $1,500 a month, where that same property as a residential assisted living facility with some modifications and obviously to, you know, make it up to code, um, you know, you can maybe double, triple, quadruple that rent so with a little bit more work and a little bit more due diligence and understanding of the processes, um, you know, you can really multiply your, your um, cash flow and your income uh, quite a bit. So, you know, that's coming from the financial real estate side, but those are the two reasons why I really like residential assisted living. And I don't see it slowing down anytime soon, um, especially here in Phoenix. I feel like uh, Phoenix is quite the Mecca for residential assisted living facilities. And um, so, yeah, really looking forward to the future. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much, dude, for coming on and really kind of explaining and giving a breakdown of everything else that we're doing and then what you are involved in. I think that will give a lot of people who are probably possibly thinking about passively investing, uh, especially because, you you know, you get a lot of people who want to get into residential assisted living. And I would say a good percentage of people want to pass be passively invested, right? Like yourself, where it's like, I know I want to be in this industry. But yet, I really don't want to be on the operational side of things, but I do want to help contribute to operators who are willing to be operational and do that side of things and help contribute to that side of things and making sure that each and every operator that you're involved with or that is involved in each deal is really doing a good job and really providing that care. And at the end of the day, as long as they're being successful, you'll be successful, right? The, your investors, so on and so forth. So I think that's really important. And so for people who are looking like, well, okay, I want to passively invest and make sure I can contribute what I can contribute. I think there is that heartfelt aspect to it, you know, and more than just like, oh, well, I just want to get this property, have a tenant in there. And I think one thing you forgot to mention is the fact that the terms are longer uh, mm -hmm. with residential assisted living, right? It's not, you don't have such a high turnover and not only that, but each operator has to keep that property up to date, right? They have to keep it clean. They have to make sure it's presentable, right? Because when they do tours, they want the house to look good, right? And mm -hmm. so those first impressions are always very important to family. So us as uh, people who are purchasing the property as leasers, as you would say, are like, okay, you know, my property ain't going to get banged up. I'm not going to have to do a lot of renovations afterwards, you know? So that kind of really puts that peace of mind for the people that are going to be purchasing the real estate and leasing it to the operators and then vice versa for operators. It's a good way to scale their business. You know, for them, they don't have to come up with the front up cash, right? They don't have to put a huge down payment to get into a property. And so they're able to actually just lease it with 
possibly, you know, eventually purchasing it down the road, which is a whole nother topic on its own. Right. So there's so many creative ways to go about it. And that's why you and I and other people that are into real estate are so they, why they love it, why we love it. Right. Because you can get so creative with it and make sure that everybody wins, right. Everybody gets to benefit ultimately. And I think that's why residential assisted living is so intriguing to me, at least from a syndication standpoint, because so many people get to benefit, right? Passively, actively, and so on and so forth. So again, dude, thank you so much. Uh, do you want to kind of have people either reach out to you through email or is that something that you kind of are okay with or? Yeah, of course. Um, the best way to reach me is to go to my website. It's sevenfigurecapital.com. It's okay. all spelled out. And if they want to email me, it's just Greg, G-R-E-G at sevenfigurecapital.com. I'd be okay. happy to answer any questions or um, educate you know their listeners on our processes and residential assisted living really looking forward to it i'll link these down below for you for them to check out we look forward to hearing from everybody whoever's interested and hopefully we can do uh everything we can to make sure we help people reach their investment goals and whatever they're trying to do with their money so thank you greg again i appreciate you coming on here and we'll talk soon Perfect. Thanks, Serge. All right. Later, guys. Again, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button for me. Make sure to smash the subscribe button. If you haven't, go watch all these other videos, and I will talk to you all in the next one. God bless.